In this video, we're going to take a look at estimating sums. And there's two different ways that we can estimate sums. We can do that by rounding, and we can also do that by using something called compatible numbers. We'll take a look at each of those techniques. In the first couple of examples, we're going to take a look at doing this with rounding. We're going to use some problems from our math workbook. This happens to be from 3.3, which is the estimating sums section. We're going to start with some smaller numbers, and then we'll also work with some that are a little larger. For example, in this problem, which happens to be problem number one on that page, we're going to take 64 and 29. We're going to round both numbers, and then we're going to add those rounded numbers together. So when we round 64, we're going to end up with 60. And when we round 29, we'll end up with 30. And after, of course, adding the two together, we end up with an estimated sum of 90. We use this when we're looking for about how many, rather than knowing the exact number that we're actually adding together. Let's take a look at another example. Taking a look at problem number six from the workbook page. And again, now we're looking at some larger numbers. We're going to round both numbers to their greatest place, which in this case, because they're both to the hundredths, we're going to round them to the nearest hundredth, which when we do, we get 300 plus 300, of course, would equal 600. Now, when we have mixed sets of numbers, it doesn't create a problem because we still are going to round each individual number to their greatest place. Let's take a look at an example of that. For this one, we're going to use number 4 on that same workbook page. Now in this example, we have a number that is in the hundreds and we also have a number that's in the tens. We're going to round them both to their individual greatest places. So for 423, we're going to round to the greatest 100, which when we do that, we get 400. When we come down to 17, of course, we have a, digit, a set of digits that run to the tens. So we'll round 17 to the nearest 10, which when we do, we get 20. And after adding those together, we end up with 420. So we can, again, do this with like sets of digits. We can also do it where, in this case, we have a mixed set of digits. Now, I'm going to give you one of the problems from the workbook page to try. Let's take a look at number 9. We have 183 plus 134. So we're going to round both of these numbers. Again, we're going to round them both to the nearest 100 because they're three-digit numbers. Stop the video here, give this one a try, and then when you finish, come back and take a look at the answer. All right, let's look at that answer. When we round 183, it's going to round up to 200. And when we round 134, it's going to round down to 100. We add those two together, and we end up with a sum of 300. Now, of the two forms of estimating when we use sums, this is probably the easier one because most students have by now become familiar with rounding. The second way to estimate sums is using compatible numbers. This is something that's a little new for students, so let's take a look at how that works. In compatible numbers, we're trying to find two numbers that are very close to the number that we are given. One will end in a zero, the other number will end in a five. There'll be one above and one below the number that we're given. So if we take a look at 43, when counting by fives, which is essentially what we're doing, 43 falls between 40 and 45. So notice I have a zero ended number and a five ended number. They're five apart from each other. One is below and one is above the number that I'm using. So these would be the two compatible numbers. Let's take a look at a, a set of numbers that's a little larger. In this case, we have a number in the hundreds. So each of our compatible numbers will be numbers in the hundreds, one ending in zero and one ending in five. One, th because we have a one here, it's really close to the zero, which in this case would be 660. 
And since I know that it is below my given number, then all I have to do is add 5 to it to get my second number, which would be 665. Again, I have a 0 and a 5 ending numbers, and they're only 5 away from each other. One below and one above the number that we're given. Now, when we're estimating sums, we do this to both of the numbers, which gives us four numbers to choose from. So let's take a look at one of those. Again, this is going to be from our workbook, and we're going to take a look at number 11. So again, we're going to start with the compatible numbers. For 48, we could end up with 45 as the lower number and 50 as the higher number. The order here doesn't matter, okay, just so long as you have the number that's above and the number that's below. When we look at 34, the two compatible numbers here would be 30 on the lower end and 35 on the higher end. Now notice I actually put the zeros together and the fives together. Just because now you've got to select two of these numbers to add together, and it's usually easier when we put the zero ended numbers together and the five ended numbers together. It doesn't matter which two of the sets you add together, you may not always get the same answer. In this case, we did. Besides just adding this way, I could also combine them. I could take the 45 and add it to the 30. I could also take the 50 and add it to the 35. Each one may give a different answer, but they're all an estimated amount of what this original problem is. Let's take a look at one that runs up to the hundredths. And for this, we're going to use problem number eight from our workbook. So again, two compatible numbers for each of the digits in our problem. So for 721, we can use 720 or 725. For 248, we could use 250 on the higher end or 245 on the lower end. And then it's just a matter of adding these problems together. And again, we may not always end up with the same answer. Again, in this case, it, it did happen to. But there are cases where these two answers will not be the same. And what we do is we kind of compare the estimated numbers to the actual numbers in the problem to decide which one is actually closer to what the actual answer of the original problem would be. Now, I'm going to give you a problem to work on from the workbook to try for yourself. This would be number 13 in our workbook. So we have 17 and 64. So again, try to estimate these using compatible numbers. So stop the video here so that you can try it out and then come back to check your answers. Alright, so when we use our compatible numbers for 17, we're going to end up with 15 and 20. This would be the lower, of course, this would be the higher end. And then for 64, we would use 60 and 65, lower and higher here. And when we add them together, we end up with 80 for both problems. Remember that you can also combine these so I could say 15 and 60 or 20 and 65. In most cases, what we want to do is pick the two numbers that are easiest for us to add in our mind without actually having it written on a piece of paper. Because again, we are estimating what this original problem's answer would be. And we want to do that as quickly as we can. And it makes it easier if we can see the numbers and add them up in our head rather than actually writing them on the piece of paper. So again, we've reviewed rounding and compatible numbers to estimate sums.